Hello and welcome to the Bees and Orchids. I wanted to know how small a beehive I can get through the winter without any problems. So I left a kilo mating nuke. This winter I wintered it, I just wintered it as I would every other hive. Um, during the winter when uh, the oxalic drip method was performed I noticed they didn't have many food, so I gave them some sugar fondant. This is a, a, a little colony that was left over after the artificial insemination of the new queens. I took out the queen and gave that a, another colony and these on the brood they had built another, another queen which got mated and, is, uh, yeah, and I wintered it in. So let's have a look how they are doing. There are bees still. Good thing about the, the winter was there was a very cold period when there was 25 centimeters of snow. And minus six, five or six degrees during day. Well, at the beginning or at the end of the day. So it was quite cold. So that was a good test if they survived. These are perfect for artificial insemination because you got a small colony. The queens are easy to find and to check. And they have more than one little frame they can build wax on and get their nest started. It's more natural. There she is, the young queen. She doesn't have big abdomen, but look at how big her thorax is. That's the key if it's a good queen or not. The abdomen are smaller because this is a tiny hive. They didn't have much brood. So she wasn't in full laying capacity. Be very, very slowly because if something happens to the queen, there's another bee doing a waggle dance. Look at that. Nice easy bees. A bit out of focus. There's the camera, Michael. Easy going piece. How oh, very nice. So these, so I know now that I can overwinter it in a small killer hive, which is perfect because then you can get some with not too big a colonies. You can get some queens in reserve for. If there are any queenless hives at the end of the winter. Well, I have one queenless hive. So in a later video, a uh, video has already been shot, but in a later video, there uh, we will unite these with the queenless hive. So st stay tuned for that. Give a like and a subscribe. And stay tuned for the next video. But Keep watching this one because it's not over yet. There's an empty fr little frame. I'm moving them up front now. They really propolized it. There's so rearranged it. So the little nest will be in front. There is some. There's not. There are two levels in the bottom, so we need to check if the, the, the frames are capable of being moved there. That's an empty frame for the foot. So there's a gap for two frames left. And I'm going to remove the little excess wax. I forgot the feeding tray, of course. Sometimes I'm way too chaotic. But here's the feeding tray. It's a perfect fit. They come like that. And the sugar fondant. Well, that's an old frame with a little bit of uh, mold on it. So that's going into the melter, which will be another video. So stay tuned for that too. So shake out the bees
and just push it in the feeding the in high feeding tray that's how you would present them uh, for for mating so that's perfect like this just massage this in a bit put the uh, come on okay that's good too I decided to leave the cover board off there was quite a lot of uh, water drops down it so I decided to just put the lid on and that's it my smallest ever overwintered beehive great I'm so happy that it works well thank you so much for watching the video I hope you liked it have a nice day stay safe happy buzzing and happy growing for the for my orchid lovers and see you next time on another honeybees and orchids video how do